Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education running for the best education possible from the, stu from the student to the student for a better experience and today we're going to continue the chapter we had started before uh, that is reproduction in organisms which is also uh, termed as per the textbook as how do organisms reproduce and this is for the 10th standard and today we're going to start off with the various forms of reproduction which we see and uh, basically, in the last video, we discussed what was the concept of reproduction, why reproduction was essential, and what were the advantages of reproduction, and how it was not actually an essential life process. And today, we're going to take up another aspect of reproduction, that is, how reproduction helps us in generating variation, as well as similarity. So, if you look at closely, if we study reproduction, we see that reproduction helps in generating variation as well as some degree of similarity. Let's see how. If we study reproduction, we see that we have a parent. That is, the parent, the main organism. And this parent gives rise to its offspring. That is, its children. Or the organisms which are produced. It produces these organisms. And we know uh, this process is called reproduction. Now, when we actually study reproduction, we see that when this parent produces the offspring, there are some things in the offspring which are similar to that of the parent. That is, similar characteristics to parent. So if we see there are many characteristics which are similar to that of the parent in the offspring. For example, we are children. We have some features such as our uh, facial features or uh, the, you know, the way our face is. Some of these things are very similar to that of our parents. And this is what we call similarity to parents. That is why we say that reproduction leads to some degree of similarity. There is a degree of similarity which is generated in reproduction. How does this come about? It's because during the process of reproduction, the parent producing the offspring, there is a transfer of genetic material. Or if you write it closely, you can say DNA. So there is basically a transfer of DNA from the parent to the offspring due to which we have some similar characteristics being produced in the offspring. But this is a very, you know, general case. But what, for example, two parents are involved. What if there are two parents involved and they come together to produce an offspring? So this was the case of one parent. That is the one parent is producing an offspring, similar characteristics to parent, transfer of genetic material. And in this case, we will see that majority of the characteristics of the offspring are same as that of the parent. But if we look at the two parent system, so if two parents are involved, right, and there is offspring being produced, we, noticed a, we notice a slight change. We see that this offspring has a mixture of characteristics. Mixture of characteristics from both parents. So there is a mixture of characteristics from both 
parents. So this basically means that parent one provides genetic material. Genetic material one and parent two produces genetic material two. And these two genetic materials combine and they go into the offspring, right? So there's a combination of genetic material. DNA 1 combines with DNA 2 and gives a DNA of the offspring, right? And this form of reproduction is generated where there are two parents and there's a mixture of characteristics in, from both parents in the offspring of the organism. And then here we can basically understand that there's a combination of the genetic material and the genetic produced here is not the same as that of any of the parents. It is a combination of the genetics of both the parents, unlike what we saw earlier where there's one parent and it's producing an offspring. This is the first case. Okay, and this is the second case. This first case where one parent uh, is, you know, producing an offspring and is just transferring his genetic material, okay, and uh, this transfer of genetic material, you know, just produces a sense of, uh, you know, similarity with the parent, exact similarity with the parent with very little variation. This form of reproduction is called asexual form of reproduction. So, a form of reproduction which involves only one parent organism which is producing its offspring is known as asexual form of reproduction where there is just a transfer of genetic material from the parent to the offspring and there is very little variation. You will see that variation may occur, right? There may be variation, but it's very little or there is no variation at all. And even if there is variation over time, that variation becomes a characteristic, okay, to, for the organism to be able to sustain its surroundings. On the other hand, if we look at this particular form of reproduction, where there is parent one giving genetic material one, parent two giving genetic material two, and their DNAs or genetic material combined in, to form the genetic material of the organism, thereby giving a mixture of characteristics from both parents, so, uh, this form of reproduction where there are two parents involved who combine the genetic material to produce offspring is known as sexual form of reproduction. So, there are two main forms of reproduction. A sexual form of reproduction and a sexual form of reproduction. I hope that's clear to each and every one. It's a very, very important concept. The difference between sexual and asexual form of reproduction. One very important thing in sexual form of reproduction is that in this form of reproduction, there is a maximum chance, maximum chance of variation. You will see that there is a high chance that there is variation in the offspring as compared to the parents, right? And those variation, that variation helps in generating evolution. So it is a very, very, very important thing to note that evolution is more prevalent in a sexual form of reproduction rather than an asexual form of reproduction, right? So evolution is a characteristic of a sexual form of reproduction rather than a sexual form of reproduction, right? So I hope this sexual and asexual form of reproduction is clear to each and every one of you. Let's uh, and with this, I conclude this video. We are basically now discussed in this video the forms of reproduction, sexual and asexual, and how they go about. In the next video, we will be studying them all in detail. Thank you for joining me. I'm making short videos because, you know, it's very easy for you to interpret. And it's very easy for you to, you know, pick up the topics, study them. It's much easier rather than looking at a one hour long video, which I used to do earlier, which I realize is a bit more complicated. So this is easier, much better and more easier and much easier to understand. So thank you very much for joining me. Do like and subscribe. Any comments are welcome. Any suggestions are welcome in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye. Stay healthy, stay smart and do keep studying.